Uh, we're here at the uh, Porcupine Freedom Festival 2010 in Lancaster, New Hampshire. And uh, we talk about a lot of different alternatives to the mainstream system, and uh, or the mainstream systems of doing everything. So one of the things that's a really important area that, that's ve been very corrupted is the money system. So today we're going to have Daniel Tobas talk to us about the math of money freedom, time-based money. Yeah, Daniel? All right. So, <clears throat> yes, I'd like to talk about the math of money freedom, and you'll have to excuse us because our screen isn't working too well, so I have a, a little uh, screen here that has my slides. And um, if you're watching at home, uh, you can view these slides by going to uh, nhalternative.com. Uh, the the, the nhalternative.com, it's a blog. The very first blog post has uh, an electronic copy of these slides. It's PDF. should be fairly easy to read. Okay, so you can go along with these slides at home if you'd like. <coughs> so, now, first thing I want to say is there's many reasons to be against our current monetary system. Um, against our, our current monetary system, it's... It, Basically, it's based on force. It's saying that uh, money is, has value because somebody declares it to have value. That's basically the whole idea of legal tender. Now, in practice, the force isn't used too much. Uh, you don't see it too much. Uh, about the, the way the laws are is that you have, I believe it's set up where you have to accept Federal Reserve notes in order for a debt. Now how many Federal Reserve notes I don't know so I don't know how effective that law is but we should be against the fiat currency because it funds things such as war and perhaps putting people in jail that you might not think should be in jail maybe you have some friends that uh, maybe have just generally been harassed maybe they didn't get end up in jail maybe they just had to spend a year in the court system uh, and uh, we don't want or fiat money funding that. And the way a fiat money funds that is, is by allowing the government just to print more money. Okay, so if the government prints more money, uh, <clears throat> then they can use that to, to buy bombs or, or do other things. So that's a few reasons why we, why we should be against the fiat currency. There's many more. But <clears throat> the way I really want you to think about it is the only reason our money has value uh, is because we believe it does. Okay, the minute that we uh, get worried that our money won't have value, we'll go out and spend it as quick as we can, and or that's generally what happens uh, when uh, inflation starts at a, at a very significant level, and um, we'll go out and spend it as quick as we can. Um, eventually it'll be worthless. This is what happened in Zimbabwe, this is what happened in Z Brazil, this is what happened in the Weimar Republic, and I can't uh, mention every time this has happened because it's happened too many times. Ar Argentina is another example. Okay, so uh, with our current, current monetary policy, again it funds wars, it penalizes saving because if you save under our current system, even with interest, you're not going to actually retain the value of what you have. Okay, uh, generally with in, like with two three percent interest that you get at a bank, uh, you won't have the same purchasing power that you started with. Okay, and then it creates boom and bust cycles. That's another issue. Um, basically, they put more money into the circulation that kind of overheats the system, and that's the boom. Eventually, it busts, and then they feel like they need to solve the bust by putting more money in. So it, it's a complete. It'll always be cycle. Okay, and then uh, m perhaps the main reason we should be against the fiat currency is because it undermines the individual. It makes your currency something which somebody else controls, whereas if you have an ounce of silver in your hands, that's something that you control. Okay, you, you are indeed the owner of that ounce of silver. Okay. Okay, so now what I want to describe is a is a monetary payment system, a way that you could pay for uh, goods and services without using anything involving the current currency. And um, <clears throat> so I, I've set up a fictional situation 
uh, uh, where a few actors are actually using the system. We'll, fi we'll find uh, four major actors in this example uh, as, the, uh, as the talk goes on. But uh, the, first, uh, the first I want to think about a simple relationship, okay? So think about the relationship of an employer and an employee. So in this example, I have Wanda being the employer at Foods, Inc., and Jim being an employee, okay? Now, Wanda and Jim, they just happen to not be very pleased with the current monetary system, and so they think, trying to think something else, and uh, think of something else, and so they uh, developed a system of credit. So Jim will be paid in credits, uh, Wanda will pay Jim in credits, and uh, Jim will take those credits and redeem them at Wanda's store. Okay, so basically it's credits. Cre credits is an abstract concept that shouldn't have any, have any value, but because Wanda has agreed to provide food uh, in exchange for those credits, that gives those credits some value. Okay, and that's, what I, that's what's big on me. I, I like truth. Our current uh, piece of paper that we use as money doesn't have any value, but if Wanda is willing to provide food in exchange for these credits, that actually truthfully gives uh, these credits value for as long as Wanda is willing to do that. Okay, so in the example I have that Jim, the employee, uh, works four hours and Wanda, the employer, uh, pays Jim three credits. Okay, and that's, uh, think about this on a per week basis. Of course that's not much, I'm thinking also maybe Jim works more hours and gets paid federal reserve notes for the other hours just because you need some money uh, in the rest of the economy. He might want to buy other things besides food. So this is just an example where we're setting up. And this, this is a this is a great type of situation to have because it's it's weekly. It'll it'll continue uh, as time progresses. Okay? And so <clears throat> And on the slides, I have a, a little picture, or actually a diagram, that uh, illustrates uh, the, uh, the relationship when Wanda pays Jim, right? One, after one week, Wanda pays Jim three credits, and on the slides, I have Foods, Inc., right? And then there's an arrow going to Jim, and above the arrow, I put the number three, and so that's to represent that Foods Inc. owes Jim three credits, right? That's what that type of diagram is to uh, is meant to uh, convey. Okay. So we say after a week goes, Jim buys ten dollars uh, of food from Wanda, and the diagram should uh, yeah. So Jim uses all his credits to buy so much. Of food, I think. Actually, I want to kind of think of a credit worth uh, ten dollars itself. But once Jim spends all the credit and gets the food in exchange, then I have a diagram that just has Foods Inc. and Jim with no arrows between them because the debt has been relieved. Okay. So now this concept is not very new. It's it's uh, existed for quite some time and it's been in use for quite some time. It's a it's a uh, you'll see this concept implemented in the idea of a co-op, okay? A co-op might have somebody working for them, you know, they join, they become a member of the co-op, and maybe instead of paying dues, they work at the actual co-op. And so instead of getting paid money, maybe maybe the, they work at the co-op to, to pay, the, that covers the dues. If they work extra, maybe they actually get paid in store credit instead of money. And so that's the idea, we're all cooperating to make sure we have a grocery store or maybe a, a specialty food store or organic food store uh, or anything you want. It doesn't have to be food. Okay, now, now, so, so what I've described so far is not incredibly interesting because it's been done before, uh, it's, it's been employed successfully, and, but it, and it's not really applicable on a wide scale. Okay, but I want to talk about a situation where Wanda and Dale, so in my mind I have Dale and Wanda meeting at like the gym and they're talking and um, so Wanda and Dale work out an arrangement with each other okay and that arrangement is that uh, Wanda's gonna allow Dale uh, to borrow to to basically have Wanda's gonna allow uh, not Jim Dale to have a line of credit Okay, so, so 
and the same types of credits that Jim was using, Wanda's going to just allow, at the drop of a hat, Dale to borrow up to 100 credits.